Hey, what's up everybody? This is Osterberg501 and today I want to do an update on one of my recent videos that went over a theory crafting build for the Devastator in the Outriders demo. Now before we get into the video, less than 5% of people that watch my videos are subscribed to my channel. So make sure to subscribe if you want to keep up with all of my uploads. That first video was mostly focused on the armor mods and how those armor mods can buff and augment the main abilities for the build. And if you want to go into more specifics with that, I'd recommend watching the first video. We're going to go over a little bit of that in this video, but this video is going to mainly be focused on adding to that by going over the class skill system and going over what I think is going to be the best build for once a game is fully released to give you a very strong early build to help you farm up all the good items you're going to need to make more intricate builds. And this build is pretty much completely focused around the Reflect Bullets ability. And this ability is create a barrier that captures all enemies' projectiles and accumulates damage. After 10 seconds of triggering the ability, the accumulated damage is reflected back to enemies in front of you. The barrier also protects you from melee attacks by reflecting some of the damage back. Now if you watch our first video, with all the mods that are put into this build, this Reflect Bullet skill essentially turns into an activatable buff on your that puts a barrier up in front of you that constantly reflects all projectiles back to the enemies doing massive amounts of damage to pretty much all the enemies in your sight and even some enemies that aren't in your field of view. And I'll have all the mods up that I used in that first video but like I said I'd recommend going checking out that video if you want to get more specifics on all of those mods and how they augment the Reflect Bullet ability. The only thing that was changed armor mod wise from that video to now is I changed the boots and got another Reflect Bullets mod that is extra time increases the skills duration by 20% which is a pretty decent buff because the longer and more often you can have the Reflect Bullets up the more damage you're going to do the more damage reduction you're gonna have just giving you a massive buff in pretty much every way possible. Now the main thing that I want to do in this video is go over a build for the class skill system in the game which we only are able to have two skill points of in the demo but once we get to the max level of 30 when the game is fully released we will have 20 skill points to put anywhere we want in this tree and if you haven't looked in this tree in any detail this tree gives a massive amount of power increases so much so that where you allocate your skill points is going to be a massively important part of every build in the game and the first part of this is something you're able to do in the demo and something that I've been testing out that seems to work and I change up my skill points for this and the first one is 6% anomaly power which is to get me to the main thing I want which is 6% skill leech. Now I did test this and this does seem to work off of reflected damage from reflect bullets but it doesn't seem to work how you think it would. I was getting heals off of getting shot and having the bullets reflected back with the reflect bullet skill up but I'm not sure if it's actually a one-to-one -to, -one to actually doing six percent because it didn't seem to be giving me that much health but that is also hard to test because you're taking a bunch of damage while getting shot so it could also just be that it's healing up the damage you're taking, making it look like it's not healing you as much. This will require further testing, but it does seem to actually work to where Skill Leech will heal you off Reflect Bullets. And the rest of our 18 points are going into the Vanquisher tree. And the reason I'm doing this is because this tree is focused mostly on weapon damage and buffing up your weapons and giving you big damage buffs. And the reason I'm putting a lot of my points in this stuff like this is because with all of our armor mods, a Reflect Bullet skill is essentially just a passive we put on ourselves, and we can still shoot our weapons and use other abilities. So focusing our armor mods on the Reflect Bullet skill and then focusing our skill points on weapon damage buffs up all the things we're able to do at the same time. 
So we're still incredibly strong with our weapons. Wow, our reflect bullets is up, giving us healing, giving us massive damage reduction, and putting out a ton of damage to any enemies that shoot us. And these small nodes are all passive stat increases, so I'm going to go through those a little bit quicker. We have 8% damage increase, 15% armor piercing, 15% close range weapon damage increase, 12% assault rifle weapon damage increase, 8% weapon damage, 20% crit damage, 8% weapon damage, 15% close range damage, 8% weapon damage, 5% weapon leech, minus 20% reload time, and then 5% weapon leech. So that is all these small nodes that are just passive stat increases. And the bigger nodes can also have some just passive stat increases, but most of them are somehow gameplay changing or able to be controlled in some way. So something like an activatable passive. So the first two bigger nodes I want to go over are some of the most interesting ones because I'm not sure how they work. And there's big nodes like this in most of the other classes as well. And the first is shotgun master it gives you a 50 percent shotgun weapon damage increase but the more interesting part is it gives you a 12 percent increased drop rate for shotguns and we have the same thing for assault rifles 20 percent assault rifle weapon damage increase and 12 percent assault rifle drop rate increase now i don't think anybody knows specifically how this works but there's two ways in my head that this can work either it just increases the chance you're going to get these specific weapon types but doesn't increase your overall drop amounts so so if you have 100%, which is all the loot you get, it's essentially taking out other drops, say sniper drops, and putting in 12% more assault drops or shotgun drops. Or that these just increase the drop rate of your overall drop rate amount, and that that extra drop rate is just these weapon types. Not sure how it works, but either way, these are still very good nodes. Besides the weapon damage increase, you can target items much more easily with this. And besides the fact that shotguns and assault rifles are heavily buffed by all the passives in this tree, making it valuable for you to target those more. You can also trade items between your characters through your stash. So you could say, go on your Devastator, have these two nodes, and farm assault rifles and shotguns on your Devastator, try to get that legendary weapon you're trying to get, and still be able to trade it to other characters. And then you could do the same with other characters with similar nodes that they have in their trees. So I'm pretty sure the Technomancer has a sniper rifle drop chance increase. So you could go farm those on that character. So next, Next, we have the champion node. Activating a protection skill increases your weapon damage by 45% for 10 seconds. In protection skills, you have reflect bullets. So this is just massively buffing the main ability we're already using, easily becoming one of the most powerful nodes for this specific build in this tree. Then we have the bounty hunter node. This is just basic stat increases, but this is also pretty strong. A 15% damage increase to elites and a 15% reduced damage you take from elites. Elites. Now, the farther you get into the game, the higher world tiers you could get up. Once you get into expeditions, you're going to be seeing more and more elites. So, this is going to be a skill that gets better and better the farther you go in the game and the more difficult content you start to face. So, just a really all overall power increase. Then we have enemies who damage you will have their physical damage reduced by 10% for five seconds. This is doubled if you also damage that enemy. And this one, in my opinion, isn't that great. It's a decent damage reduction but it's mainly just to get farther in the tree. Then our last skill is when your kinetic skill ends, increase your weapon damage by 70% for 10 seconds, which is absolutely ridiculous. That's such a massive buff. And with how low the base cooldown of skills are, you could probably have this up most of the time. And if you get some skill cooldown reduction, you could easily have this up 100% of the time. And kinetic skills, the only one we have access to in the demo is the one that I'm actually using, which I forget the name of, but you leap up in the sky, target an enemy, crash down dealing damage. So that's one of them. And I know from the small amount of information we've gotten from some other abilities, there's also another ability in the kinetic skill that I'm probably going to be using in this build when the game is fully released, which is essentially like a totem you place that pulls in all enemies while it's active, grouping up enemies, making them much easier to kill. So this is also a massive buff and it synergizes well with what the build is already doing. 
And that's pretty much all I want to go over with the update of this build. I do think this is probably going to be the first class that I'll level up when the game is fully released. And I most likely will be following this skill tree and trying to keep my build as a full bullet reflect build with high weapon damage mixed into that. So subscribe if you want to see more Outriders or other videos. Leave a like if you liked the video. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about this build. And thanks for watching.